The year is 2048. 30 years ago, we outsourced the very runnings of our lives to machines. Machines that learn. The machines learned too well. <laughs> Today, all computing resource on the planet has been consolidated in a vast maze, hewn out of solid rock. No humans have access to the maze, but the warm globe its reactors make an ideal home for millions of flesh-eating rats. Your mission is to enter the maze, sabotage the power source of the machines, and free the human race from its self-inflicted, automated prison. You are our last best hope. But until today, no human has survived. The maze of the rats. Rats, rats. <laughs> To defeat the machines, first we must understand the machines. Computer memory is the meeting point between the real and the virtual. We implement memory using a capacitor, a passive electronic component that holds a charge. We apply a charge to our capacitor, the charge decays over time. If we nominate a charge above a certain threshold as representing a binary 1 and below a certain threshold as representing a binary 0, we can store the value of one bit of information in our capacitor. If we automate the process of periodically refreshing the charge in our capacitor, we can store the value of our bit in memory for as long as we have a supply of power. But a single bit on its own is only so useful. So usually, we arrange our bits together into a group of eight, called a byte. We can use this to store a number, a letter of the alphabet, a shade of grey. The possibilities are almost limitless. By manipulating the bits within our byte, we can perform some interesting operations. If we shift all the bits in our byte to the left or the right by one position, we can multiply or divide the value of our byte by two, with almost no effort. But a single byte on its own is only so useful. So typically, we arrange our bytes together into a collection called a bank of memory. We use this memory to store a representation of whatever problem we happen to be working on. A bank of memory is only truly useful if we can individually access the bytes within that memory. To do this, we use a technique called the address bus. We index our memory from zero up to the number of bytes we have. We place the index of the byte we wish to access onto our address bus, and we can read or write that byte at our leisure. We have a bank of memory. We use it to store a representation of whatever problem we happen to be working on. We apply algorithms to that representation in the hope of finding a solution. Some of the earliest algorithms we taught the machines were pathetically trivial. This example is called a drunken walk. We arrange our memory into a grid of cells. Starting at the centre of our grid, we move in a random direction, up, down, left or right. As we enter a cell, we clear out its value, much like digging out rocks from a cavern under the ground. There is a veritable smorgasbord of algorithms we taught the machines. But they all converged on one point. We taught our machines to be effective predators. Human hackers have penetrated the machine's networks and obtained some basic intelligence on the configuration of their defences. Before you enter the maze, we will provide a brief overview of what we have learnt so far. The machines hide deep in their maze from where they control our world, disable their power to free all humans. Each maze has a reactor. Find the reactor. Sabotage. Escape. Follow markers to reach your goal. We have identified three primary variants of vermin. The burrito rat, the baby rat, the killer rat.
Superior machine engineering creates rat breeding factories. Destroy rats, have no mercy. In a tight situation, your super zapper will help you survive. Before you enter the maze, we will provide a brief training simulation. Are you ready? Yeah. You look ready. <laughs> The maze exists as a grid, but we represent the maze in memory as a one-dimensional array. We can easily translate between the xy coordinates of the cells in the grid and the zero-indexed elements of the array that are those cells. Each cell is a self-contained simulation. Implemented is a function object. It has attributes that describe the cell and arrays to hold the collections of actors that exist within the cell. One of a cell's attributes are its neighbours, a four-element array representing north, east, south and west. If a given side of the cell is closed, the corresponding element in the neighbours array is null. If a side of the cell is open, the corresponding element holds a reference to the function object that is the neighbouring cell. This lets us create a traversable graph of cells that are connected together and have cells that are completely isolated from their neighbours, giving us access to a bountiful abundance of powerful algorithms. To make a maze, we start with a grid of completely disconnected cells. Pick a cell at random. Any cell will do. Pick a neighbour of that cell, ensuring that neighbour has no connections of its own. Create a mutual connection between the two cells. Place the cell we came from onto a stack and repeat the process from the neighbouring cell we selected. As we work our way through the grid, we build up a list of places we visited. Eventually, when there are no more cells to explore, we pop an element off the stack and work back the way we came, following up any unexplored cells we find along the way. When there's nothing left on our stack, we know we formed a perfect maze. Each cell on the grid is a self-contained simulation. It is a floor space and a collection of actors that interact with each other within that space. A game loop runs 60 times a second, driven by window.requestAnimationFrame. Each frame we iterate through our array of cells, giving each one a chance to run its simulation so its actors can observe their environment and react accordingly. The simulations use simple counters, periodic waveforms, and the probability of events occurring to modulate parameters and trigger effects. Each class of actor has a set of interacting behaviours. Combining several simple behaviours together can make for complex results. When an actor moves to the edge of a cell and that edge is closed, they reflect off. The walls exert a kind of short-range, asymptotic anti-gravity expressed as a force vector 
and applied to the actor's velocity. If the edge of the cell is open, the actor is moved into the neighbouring cell with a bit of math applied to their position to reflect their entry point. The humans are possessed with a consuming impulse to seek the reactor, sabotage, escape. The rats exhibit a basic flocking behaviour where they cluster and move together as a group while maintaining some separation from their friends. The killer rats have the same base behaviour but are driven to seek the human and devour his flesh. Both basic behaviours beholden us be able to find our way through the maze. We always have an origin and a desired destination. Because we have a perfect maze, we can always find our way from one cell to any other. From our origin, we expand a search frontier through every connected cell we can find. As we search, we record the place we came from and calculate the cost in terms of distance for us to get to each point. If for a given path there are no more cells to explore, we terminate the search on that path. If we reached our destination, our search is complete and we use the list of places we came from to determine our route. We can enhance this algorithm by adding a heuristic to the cost calculation for each cell based roughly on the distance from that cell to our destination and focusing on the path with the lowest cost to help us reach our goal quickly. When the human enters the maze, he uses this formula to determine the route to the reactor. The steps of the path are contained as an array of cell indexes, arranged in order from start to finish. From the cell a human is in, we determine the exit that is connected to the next step in the path and apply a force vector in that direction, pushing the human out through the edge of the cell and into the next until he reaches the reactor. When it's time to escape, the path is reversed. It would be too expensive to calculate the path through the maze for each individual killer rat. So before updating, each cell determines the route through its neighbours to the human, applying a force vector to all killer rats in the cell in that direction, pushing them out through the edge of the cell, creating the illusion that they are seeking the human to devour his flesh. When a maze is created, we need to seed it with interesting objects. Some cells have a special object in them, like the reactor or a rat factory. The first cell in the maze is always the ingress the human enters through. The last cell is always the reactor. The human follows the path from the ingress to the reactor and back. We can treat the steps of this path as linear, picking points at random or according to some rules, placing items in the cells referenced by those points. We can also place items off the path so they have an effect on play, but don't interfere with the human's movement. A level counter is incremented each time a maze is completed. As the levels get deeper, the mazes get larger with more devious entities hiding in the depths. The contents of the first four levels is hard-coded, but beyond that, some cheap tricks are employed to create the illusion of forethought. If we take a level number and apply some modular arithmetic, we can activate or disable the occurrence of certain effects and objects based on the result. Every third level zooms to follow the human. Every seventh level has an extra power-up. Every thirteenth level is a tiny maze. At higher levels, these effects can alias and synchronise, creating unpredictable, exciting results. The future is uncertain. But one day soon, the human race must enter the maze of the rats.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon.